What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited to give you an announcement. And this announcement I'm so excited for because over the last few years, we've been working with the Oculus integration, they introduced hand tracking. I tried to do experiences where we could use our hands and actually push different buttons and interact with our hands. But at the time it wasn't really easy to do that. And when Oculus basically released those features, they were more like MVP. I think they were trying it out just to see if it would work with the VR scene. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to be announcing the Oculus Interaction SDK. And this is a big, big deal for XR. The reason for that is because this SDK, not only it's going to allow us to create better experiences for VR, but it's also open up many possibilities for anybody that wants to design more realistic experiences so if you want to touch buttons if you want to grab a key if you want to open a door maybe you want to hold a cup of coffee there's a lot of things that you can do with this sdk so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to give you an overview of what is available in the sample scenes we're going to go through all the different interactions that they included in these sample scenes and then in the next video i'll walk you through more of a development side of things where we're gonna go through and actually start coding but for this one we'll just give you an overview so let's go ahead and jump into my computer and start working on it all right guys so i got the scene up and running which is one of the basic scenes and we'll go through every single one of these which is a snap grab direct touch post detection transformables and also basic ray so you're probably used to this because these hands right here look like the ones from the operating system so Let's go ahead and check out a couple of the different interactions that are available. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to grab the cup. And as I grab the cup, I, if you look at my hand, uh, if I were to do a pinch, you're gonna see the, the pinky finger kind of coming up. If I try to close it, it basically adjusts. So I'm gonna put the cup on the very bottom. And then I'm gonna try to just see if I can, there we go. So in this case, the cup is basically just attaching to the handle, which, you know, it makes it look really realistic. I can try that with my, let's try that with my other hand. In this case, I'm also grabbing the cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's try that again. I'm going to try to grab it. And you can see, you can see my hand in here. And I like how they are doing the, po the pose in there. So this is how we can grab a mug. I'm gonna try to do the torch. So in the ca case of the torch, I'm just closing my face. I can just basically let go of my hand a little bit. And you're gonna see, how that attaches. So if you were to try to do this with the out of the box implementation, there's no way that you can do this unless you code a lot, a lot of different interactions with the OVR components. So I'm grabbing the, the, the torch, I'm just moving it around. If I were to just do like a pinch, I can do that. In this case, I have to, you know, just do a fist and move it around and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in place. And again, I can do that with both hands. Let me put that over there. What about the key? What if I wanted to do, this one is going to be the pinch and grab key. So, I mean, if we're using this for an experience where we have to open doors, the I think this will work just great. What if I try other fingers? So it looks like in this case, other fingers don't work. I just have to use my thumb finger and also the index finger. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that there. Do that again. So this last one is no pose. This is just an object what they call just a virtual object. I can grab it with that, I can grab it with that. I can close my, my hand and I can do that with this hand. So, I mean, everything just works so well. And I can do that here, I can grab the key. Let's go ahead and grab my coffee. Coffee is very important, so it's gonna go ahead and drink coffee. And then we can also just grab it this way. Okay, so let's try and do a different scene in this case. I'm going to do the direct touch scene. So this one, if you watch my videos in the past, I tried to do a bond, but they didn't really look real. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and push it. And it's, it's in this case, I'm trying to go all the way to the very bottom, but the cool thing about this system is that the hand is snapping to the button. So I can't really go through the button, which is what makes the experiences not look realistic. Because if you were to develop this from scratch, the hand will go through the button, you'll get some collision, but it, is, it doesn't really look like a, like a real button. What about pressing a touchpad? So this is, you know, if you had a game where you're doing kind of like a password combination to get to be able to go to the, through the door, then you would do something like this. And, you know, this again, it snaps to the button. I can't go through any of the buttons. 
which, you know, it makes it. I think there is a max in there that at some point I can go through, but it just makes it look so realistic that I think this implementation is just, it's just amazing. Okay, so how about scrolling? And this is using the Unity Canvas with scrolling. I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through this. Again, this is also a snapping. I can go up and down. I can do this. I can select the button. So scrolling with the canvas works really great. So this one is a hover above buttons. So I'm gonna try to, there we go, hover over some of these buttons. And then you can kind of see the highlighted area. And the second one allows me to push it so I can push it. It also snaps. I can also do that on this one. And then this one goes, you know, further down than the second one. And then the first one is just, you know, a highlighted area. And then I can do that with any, any of the hands. So pretty impressed with these features. Let's try and look at the pose detection. So this one is really cool and it allows me to, to do detection on different poses. And I also tried to do something like this and I mean, it wasn't as accurate as this is. So if I do thumbs up, you can see the thumbs up. What about on my left hand? I can also do thumbs up right, thumbs up left. How about thumbs down? Woo, that stuff is not working. Or how about doing a rock? If you're doing like a, a rock, paper, scissors. There we go, so rock, paper, scissors. I can do that as well. What if I open it a little bit and then at this point is, there we go. But in this case, scissors, oh, okay, there we go. The scissors, we wanna make sure that we do scissors so you can see the scissor detection there. And then we can also do it with both hands. And then if I want to tell somebody to stop, make sure that somebody to stop. If you're writing a game and you wanna, you know, capture any of these different uh, hand gestures, then you can do something like that. So what about transformables? Let's go ahead and go into transformables. This one I think is one of the coolest ones. Uh, the reason for that is, okay, so if we start looking at the map, let's see if I can, oh, I love San Francisco. So this is where we're going to go in our next trip. Or if we wanna go maybe to a different area, I can grab this. So the way that this is working, this is does a translate on plane. So it's basically snapping to the plane. I can now grab the pin and put it anywhere else. It's just basically, you know, like doing a ray cast and finding the position that the pin should be located around. So if I wanna to go to south of San Francisco, if I want to maybe go to the bay, then I can put that in there. So how about these different physics components? So these ones are, are cool though. I can, I can grab them and I can, I can throw them. Let me try that one more time and I can throw them. These ones really feel really realistic. I can just grab that one. How about this one? How about grab that one? How about just you do, doing, grabbing it with a fist? Then I can grab them as well, doing that as well. I also noticed that I could actually resize them. Like if I grab with my two fingers and do a pinch, I can also resize them, I can drop them in there. So this is using, you know, physics components. Let me try that one more time. Maybe I'll just grab that one and then we'll just throw it over there. And then the throw just, just feels a lot more realistic than it used to be with the, without this implementation. So how about the rotate? In this case, it's just a lid, right? We're just gra grabbing, uh, Maybe we found a treasure and we want to constrain the angle of the box lid. So this is an, uh, an interaction that you can, you can use to do that. I'm using any of my two fingers. I can do also a fist. So this works really great. This one was really cool though. Like if you wanted to grab the doll and I don't want to show my hands when I'm grabbing the doll. Let me try that. I'm going to go back a little bit and then maybe just do a fist. There we go. So as you're grabbing the doll, then the hands basically disappear. So if I go and grab it as well, if you didn't want to show the hands for some reason, you can do that and grab it in my left finger. Let's try and see if I can grab it with the right hand. And you can kind of see, let's see if I can throw her. Oh, I can throw her. How about now? Okay, so she stays in there. She's not a physical object. And then the last one is going to be a basic ray. You're probably familiar with this kind of, you know, UI if you're using the Oculus operating system. The way that it works is you basically have a ray and the target object, which in this case is a, is a canvas component, which in this case is using Alpha Blender. You can do, you know, you can use both of the hands to do selection on different items. If you had maybe, you know, different items in your inventory that you wanted to scroll through and using an Alpha Blend type of indicator that you can do that. So currently, if you want to use this system, you can use Unity 2020 LTS or Unity 19 LTS. 
The, if you're using Unity 2020, you're gonna be using the XR plugin framework, which you know I've been showing you in the channel how to use that. But if you're using 2018, you can also use the legacy XR setup. Obviously, I recommend that you use the XR plugin framework because that is the one that we're, you know, XR is being, and Unity has been putting more focus on. The other things, I'm gonna be including the link to the system in the description of this video. So if you guys wanna download it, play around with it, and, you know, get more familiar with the system, you know, you can do that. I'm going to be covering more of the components that are available in the system in the future videos. For now, I just wanna keep it as a demonstration of what's available. But if you guys have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thank you. Thank you.